guys welcome back to happiest girls on earth i'm nicole happy new year here we come 2021 and for the new year i'm going to be filming an organizational video and it's going to be organizing my disney pins so unfortunately i ran out of room on my two cork boards and i know that pins aren't really meant to be stored on cork boards because they could you know ruin the backs of them so for christmas i asked for a pin Folio, not sponsored or anything, but it's www.gopinpro.com. We will link that down below. But it is going to hold my new pins that were either not on cork boards, and I'm also going to transfer some of my better and more rare pins to this pin um, folio because I want them to be kept in good condition, and I don't think cork boards are really good for the back, so. I'm not going to put any more stress on the backs of them for at least my good, a lot of my good pens. So today I'm going to be moving around some Disney pens, putting it on my pin folio, you know, rearranging them on my two bulletin cork boards, and I hope you enjoy this organizational pin video. So I'm going to go over my current pin situation. So on my first little cork board, I have my Splash Mountain pin collection. I have um, a few Space Mountain pins and other attractions like Test Track. I also have a small Winnie the Pooh collection. And then a few resort pins here and there. And as you can see, I collect Disney Dorables and I put a few of my Disney Dorables in my collection on top of my pin board. On display let me know in the comments below if you have Disney Dorables I don't know if that was like a hidden collection thing but I always used to get them at five below and then on my second way larger pin board I have all of my original pins that I first started collecting when I was like eight years old so there's some random rack pins that have a special meaning behind them but then also I have a lot of my mystery pack pull pins um, from there as well so like I have the zoom zoom ones um, or actually a few zoom zoom ones I have a small tinkerbell collection on this pin board I also have um, the shang I think they're they're Hong Kong or Shanghai teacup pins with like characters in them I also have the Hong Kong lollipop um, mystery you know, pins that I pulled from that set, and then um, a few open edition or like the starter sets. But all in all, this this one's a little more random compared to the others. Now that you see the original setup, let's get into reorganizing. And we could first start by placing pins on cork boards and the ones that are off cork boards right now in my pin folio. So I have flipped my camera around and this is what a pin folio looks like. It has a pouch in the front and then a zipper and a little strap, but I don't really intend on using that. So when you open it up, we have two sections for pins. We have this, we have the little protector flap, and then another side. And so I had all these wishable pins from the mystery set that I had opened and I didn't have room on my cork board so I wanted to put them on the pin folio in order to protect them and then I was also thinking about putting my splash mountain pins that are up here and my other splash mountain pins that aren't on a cork board on here as well. Splash Mountain pins and Splash Mountain merch in general has been very rare and has been very expensive since the announcement about the retheming to a Tiana themed log ride. And so since these are becoming more and more rare, I figured I would put them on my pin folio in order to keep them in good condition. So let's take them off the cork board and put them on the pin folio. Alright, so like I mentioned, I'm going to put the Splash Mountain ones at the top left of the pin folio. And the first one I'm going to put on is this What Goes Up Must Come Down Splash Mountain pin. I think this is just a rack pin um, from the Disney World parks. And then my next one is this Splash Mountain Seven Dwarves pin. This is from uh, a mystery set from like 2008 and it's um all the attractions and then with characters and then this is before i was even big into splash mountain so there's a little distress here and then 
Then obviously we have Dopey and Grumpy riding Splash Mountain. And then this next one I actually got from a trade in the parks. And it is the Vulture from Splash Mountain. And it's a hidden Mickey pin. And I believe this is a completer pin for whichever year this came out for. And then this next one, this one's, I really like this one, it's pretty. So it's Splash Mountain and Mickey and Pluto are riding. And then it says Walt Disney World. And then there's like an E here because it is part of the e-ticket attraction series and if we take a look at the back it actually says it's a limited edition of 1500 and this is 11 out of 12. i don't know if this must have been like a monthly series um but this is the only one i have again this is a really cool pin and i think i ended up getting this one on ebay and this next one is another rack pin just like the one above and it says everything is satisfactual and then Splash Mountain at the bottom. Pretty basic, but I like the glitter embellishment. And this next one is Brer Rabbit and the Log Ride. When I take a look at the back of this one, it says that it's from Disneyland. Um, again, I got this one off eBay. So I'm not exactly sure where it's from or the history behind it. But I got this one to add to my Splash Mountain collection. And this next one we have is Everybody's Got a Laughing Place. And here's a closer look at it with Rare Rabbit at the top. But again, this is another rack pin from the Disney World Parks. And now we have another rack pin from the Disney World Parks. And this is more recent, within the past year, I think. It says, I conquered Splash Mountain. This is the most recent Splash Mountain pin I have. I know there was two released in the parks, but again, they're just so hard to get. And then I also got this Brer Fox pin, and it is from the mystery pin bag for the Fantasyland teams, like, so like the fantasy football, but it was Disney attractions instead of football, so Brer Fox. And this pin is actually from an attractions booster set that I got, and I have the other the three that came in the set as well, but I figured I'd put the Splash Mountain on with the Splash Mountain collection. And then here is where I think I'm going to transition from my Splash Mountain pins into my wishable pins like I had mentioned. I oh god I actually scoot this over. So I have the Brer Rabbit Wishable pin. Super hard to get and started getting a little pricey on eBay. But we have the Brer Rabbit. And then I also have the Brer Fox as well, and I think I'm just going to put it right below this, just to, you know, sort of make this flow a little bit. And then from here on out, I think I'm going to do my wishable pins from the mystery bag down here, and then we'll take it from there. Alright, so here we go. So, sitting next to Brer Fox, I was going to couple up the wishable pins that I have because they come in like pairs and such. So I think I'm just going to put the Tigger and Winnie the Pooh pin on this row. And then I was also going to include the Frozen pins as well. And after taking a look at the Tigger and Winnie the Pooh next to the Frozen ones of the Olaf and Sven, they are much bigger if you compare them side by side, which I haven't realized that until I set them side by side. But um, I also have a Winnie the Pooh little side collection, and but I still think I'm going to keep the Tigger and Winnie the Pooh with all of the Wishable collections, like I sort of kept the Splash Mountain with the Splash Mountain. But there's no room to put the Winnie the Pooh down here, so I'm going to keep them all together. So this next row, I'm going to put the Toy Story Wishable collection with the Alien and Buzz. And then I was going to put the pirate collection with the, like, Jack the pirate and then the skeleton. And then the lone haunted mansion hatbox ghost to complete this side of the pinfolio. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put all of them in because right now they still have their backings on and are not, like, placed in. But I'm going to do a time lapse of this and then I'll be back. So 
So my goal for this side of the pinfolio, I think, is only to fill up this top section with my side collection of Winnie the Pooh, like I had mentioned. I don't have many. I have this Winnie the Pooh Halloween 2020 Limited Edition Trick or Treat Cutie Pin. This is so cute that Lauren ended up buying and sending to me. I know a lot of people, it's a limited edition. I think you have to take off the back in order to see of how many, but I know a lot of people keep the cards on it when they put it in pin portfolios, but I just don't think it's look. it looks as good. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you leave these cards on when like, you like put them in there or if you just save the cards just in case you end up reselling them in the future. You know what I mean? All right, so I have these three... We need the poo pins, and so I'm going to take those off the cork board. Alright, we're going to come up here and just place them up here. I haven't really thought about how I'm laying them out yet. This is so cute. Sun and rain brings rainbows, and it's like a little slider pin. Oh, there's a little rainbow. Super cute. And this is from the Shanghai Disney Resort, so that's pretty cool. So, maybe just like the baby Winnie the Pooh there, him in the middle, that there. But then we have this too. Hmm. There's, I don't know, I'm so confused because I don't really want to keep the back on it. So, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back off and then let's reevaluate. So I took this pin off the card, and look how cute it is. The orange glitter is so pretty. Look at Pooh chomping down in a little chocolate bar. But I said I would give you a look at the back, and it's a limited edition of 5,000. And then I think I've decided that this is a pretty big pin. And this should probably be the staple point of the top. So I'm going to put this in the middle. And I got this one from a trade. I'm not really sure where it's from, but I feel like it should go in the second row. And this gorgeous pin from Shanghai should be at the top row. And then the baby poo rack pin will be on the top left, maybe a little further up, and then this below. I think that's good. And I actually have one more Winnie the Pooh pin, and it's this Tigger pin. It was one of those mysteries that, like, when you check out, they have Gosh, this one's hard to get off the cork board. All right. Oh. See, that's probably why it's damaging. Because it was so hard to get off, and then it, like, popped off. So, this one will probably just go here or here somewhere. We'll figure it out. But that's it for my little Winnie the Pooh small collection. Alright, yeah, I feel much better about my, my pins now. They seem to be more organized. I don't have random pins here and there. They are either on a bulletin board or a pinfolio. So I think I'm in good shape with organization. 2021 for me is going to be trying to keep everything organized and especially with some of my little growing collections like wishables and pins. I want to say it as organized as I possibly can. So this video was just a hint of my new organization resolution for this year. But if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe down below. We have some awesome, exciting in-park and at-home content coming for you in 2021. Hopefully this is going to be one exciting year, so you're going to want to be subscribed. But other than that, I'll see you next Monday. Bye!